Hey guys, Jason Say here again. This is going to be what if Midoriya was Cyclops. In this one, Midoriya would be born as basically the only mutant, which would make him different from every quirk user, basically. As their bodies, we don't know if it's down to DNA, but we do know it's down to like their bone structure, which proves they're their quirk users, or at least their joints. Well, with Midoriya, you can't tell it's a quirk user, like physically, you, but if you look at his DNA, you can tell it's very different, and they assume that's where he gets his quirk. As, as a kid, when he's about five years old, he manifests his quirk in the form of kin kinetic energy beams that basically plow through the entire building, like the ceiling of it. Midori would close his eyes, and eventually would be able to, you know, control it like that. They wish to give Midoriya, like, these glasses that were red that could actually bounce back kinetic energy, so Midori would wear those. And Midori wouldn't have a Scott, wouldn't have Scott, um, Scott's injury, where he got hit in the head, now he can't really control his vision. No, Midoriya can. His eyes just look bright red at all times, and it, he looks high. So, yeah. Now, Midoriya basically would actually, like, him and Baka are close friends as kids to the point where Bakugo was, like, constantly and, like, at odds with Midoriya's, like, rivals. But then when it comes down to, like, just, like, classic friendships, they're, they're pretty up there. But Midoriya would also try to learn, like, the fact that he's not really outcasted, he sees a lot of people use their quirks because Midori is a strong guy. He will challenge him for the power of strength. As he being Bakugo, Bakugo is his number two in terms of overall power, he will challenge him to become his new number two and new number one. So eventually, when it comes down to like Midoriya, by the time he's like 14, he studied on dozens of quirks and he's relatively, uh, through the battle like you, he's almost unmatched. He is just that good. So when Midoriya would like, you know, be asked like, oh, like, which school do you want to go to? He says, UA. And this is surprise no one, Talia, she says, he doesn't really, doesn't really care for the hero course, but he wouldn't mind trying out their, um, um, what, what was it called? Uh, I guess the, the, the hero gear program, the one Hot Hatsume's, and he says he won't, he'd be interested in trying that out too. So that does intrigue a few people, but they understand it. Midoriya's a very intriguing person. But, um, Eventually does go on to Midori going home, the Sludge Villain would attack him, so he's actually able to bounce the, the Sludge Villain back. And the Sludge Villain is actually able, able to be KO'd by Midoriya, because it's kind of kinetic energy, it's just going to knock him back. The Sludge Villain's knocked out, All Might collects it, and Midori travels with All Might Babysitter leading out like a blast that blasts him through the air. So eventually as they talk, eventually All Might would be building before he would go into a small Might form, but Midori would catch him. He catches him, they talk. I mean, it breaks down how he's not, he's not, well, a quirk user, but he's also not quirkless. He explains how his body doesn't function like a quirk user, who so explains his quirk, or his superpowers, in his DNA. Which does intrigue All Might. This ends up in with him and Midori talking, so actually we would mention one for all, and if Midori would like to have it. As Midoriya is in great shape. He fights a lot, he trains a lot, he has Bakugo. So the shipping that Midori is in, and like 10 months, for um, UA, he's not in that exact shape, but he's relatively close to that level of, like, form. So, All Might would ask Midori if he's willing to become a vessel, Midoriya says yes, but All Might wants to make sure he's trained first, so he actually would train Midoriya. And for the first, like, I would say for, like, four months, Midoriya's body is in good shape, so he gets one, he gets one for all. And after another two months, he gets a good grasp on it, and this is where he would mock shoot style. And he actually wouldn't bite Bakugo to train with him, because when it comes to developing new techniques, he does include Bakugo, because Bakugo doesn't really like being left behind. Or left out of the, out of the picture. So Bakugo is told everything from the jump, which does annoy him, but he kind he of understands why he's the one who choose Midoriya. Midoriya is pretty, pretty uh, interesting. Uh, pause real quick. Alright, sorry about that. Alright. So, by the end of the ten months, uh, Midoriya and Bakugo get to UA, and they're both in pretty good shape. When Midoriya falls, Araka will still catch him, as Bakugo was able to reach out and grab Midoriya. But they both thank Araka, and they go inside, and when it comes down to the written test, they both pretty easily ace it. Midoriya scoring actually number one. Because he's smarter than before. His IQ is relatively unmatched for people his age. Baku would score top five, relatively around places, if you're two or three, honestly. I don't know I didn't say, just top three. But yeah. But Midoriya solidifies the number one spot. And then when it comes down to, you know, like, Araka having, like, like her being on her nerves, Midori had been pissed off Ida earlier with his rambling, so Midori would just go kind of Araka. And then when it comes down to, you know, starting, Midori and Bakugo hold different places, so the moment the gates open, Midori would leave to grab Ida before letting out a giant blast and just kind of energy spreading apart the entire field, using one for all to enhance the range. As Midoriya does have a shorter range at the base, with one for all, he basically would get 
Not all Psych Ops abilities, but he would get relatively close to them. But yeah, so everyone see what he can do before he begins kind of mowing down robots left and right. Kind of just blinking, a blast, blink, blast, blink, blast, blink, blast. Just taking down robots left and right with one blast each. Also saving a few people, as he did think that would be important for a hero test. He did it to Bakugo, so Bakugo thinks that as well. Because he thought it made sense. And for the zero pointer, Midori would just blast Rebel off of Araka because he's careful with his blasts. But then he would jump up, he's in one for all, and then he just punched the robot over. It was just that easy. His body can withstand one for all at this point. So, with the robot defeated and one punched by a Midoriya, he does get more hero points and he scores number one in UA history. Bakugo scored number, number two in UA history, and that's just like he's just more destructive, yet also more helpful. And then canon, that is. And she put on number, number two, probably number, number, number three or four, probably being beaten out by All Might, and possibly Endeavor. Possibly. Alright. Now, eventually they have they, they to 1A, they introduce them and so suit to everyone else to everyone else, and uh yeah. When it comes down to like as I was telling Midoriya to, you know, use his quirk on the um on the ball Midori because his, his lasers will kinda of actually kinda of just blow to pieces. I wasn't gonna believe it until Midori would throw it up and blast it and like Midori's head was blown to pieces. He can't really control the force, he can control the range, and that's about it. Like the range and the spread is all he's all he can, all he can control. The force is automatic. So as I understood that before you just tell Midori, you know, alright, throw it normally. But Midori would increase the strength one for all, throwing it as far as he can, and then destroys Aizawa. This versus everyone, honestly, except for Bakugo. Midori for number two, Araka having number one score. There everything else, Midori and Bakugo are the ones for bouncing between number one and two. Comes to physicality, Midori usually scores number one, but occasionally Bakugo would steal things like like um like side to side jumps or group strength. Midori couldn't really use off one, one for all on that because he'd break the machine. He'd literally just crush the handle, which he shouldn't do. So, yeah. But then later, when it came to the hero, the like, the hero teams like uh, like Midori and Araka, Bakugo and Ida, that happens later on, like, like the next day, or not like that, but like a few days later when they get the hero suits. Midori's hero suits what you see here, where Midori goes to green, is replaced with black. Now, his scarf is actually here to actually keep, keep to keep debris out of his face. You guys, you guys make, oh, that's Grand Trino's cape. No, it's a scarf from Midori, it's literally just a yellow scarf that he would use to keep rubble out of his face, because he does create a lot, a lot of debris when he, when he uses his eyes. So this is just there to keep debris out of his face, or stuff like that. It's also kind of like Aizawa's, where this doesn't like bind people, but it's very much flexible and it can be used to do that. It just, it's similar to Aizawa's, but not quite as long. And Midori's not as skilled. And then he does have to have the visor. I actually didn't draw that in. I didn't want to. Alright. Now, um, everyone in the see Midori's costume thing is pretty cool. And eventually we do get on to uh, Midori with Bakugo first, and it basically leads up to a hand-to-hand fight, which Midori would only use like his base abilities, not one for all anything like that, literally just throwing hands with Bakugo. And they should just beat Bakugo. Midori is a lot more of a, of a better martial artist, and he does have a, have, have a skill set that does include things like judo and boxing. So he beat up Bakugo, and then would go on to go find Araka and Ida, and Araka wasn't there. Floating as Ida was trying to you know, get to her, but it was, it was a struggle. When Rock got an idea, Midori would actually shove Ida mid-run, and she would tap him, making him go into the ceiling as he tried to jet boost himself and would fly in the air. Rock would let him fall down, and he landed right in Midori's arms, and then Midori would chant him as Uraka got the bomb. And Midori doesn't get number one, because all he did was throw hands and then push Ida. And Uraka, her plan wasn't really anything. All Ida was the one who got VIP. Later, USJ. We get to the USJ, and here is honestly also not anything different at the start. But when Midori is falling in the air, he just sees the villains in the water. And the thing is, not even one egg is what Midori's ability is. They think it's laser beams. No, they don't understand that it's literally just a punch beam. That's all it is, it's a punch beam. So Midori saw this, and immediately when basically, kind of, you're looking to see electricity turning his head. Or mainly his eyes. Before you release your blast, this entire spread is the water. And they'll see basically the entire water area be basically just blown apart, but the boat is rocking until Suyu would jump out and Midori would actually catch her. And she has Mineta in her arms. But, um, in the water, uh, all the villains are knocked out, and Suyu is a kind of surprise by Midoriya. But he tells her, you know, break yourself if you just chuck her all over, not all over, but over to the door. So you would catch herself and Mineta, well, Mineta would kind of probably catch her, right? He's kind of bouncing, like, like pointing his balls at his, his grapes at the uh, wall, or the dome, bouncing off them, landing, catching Suyu, and then she gets down. 
So yeah, so Midori land now having to fight um fight the Nomu. And it's Midori and the Nomu fight basically starts to start out, start out start going blow for blows, but Midori isn't as physically advanced as All Might, because his body is not like there yet. Or his output isn't isn't there at least, because it does strain his muscles and like All Might can go all out. Midori can too, but it does put a significant strain on his muscles, which he cannot sacrifice right now. If he gets too strained in the middle of the fight, he will die. So, as I was being fighting fodder, Midori fights the Nomu, and when Midori starts realizing his muscles are being strained, Yeshi would dodge from the Nomu's punches, putting in an arm lock, and flipping it onto his back. Poor Midori would let out a full force beam to his body, kind of caving it underground farther and farther. He keeps reducing output of one for all, until the, the Nomu is just in the ground. But Midori turned his eyes using one for all, and his eyes, his eyes kind of began bleeding, while he actually began losing control of his beams until Bakugo would run over, yanking down his visor, as Midori was honestly too much pain to focus. So, oh, his visor contains his beams, and Midori has, has to rest. And the Nomu is done for. Midori quite literally blasted it to pieces, and it is spread all over the ground. It is nowhere to be found. He has like, oh, oh, can we regenerate from all that? I, I don't believe it. The Nomu seems to be, to be able to regenerate, like, oh, its arm's blown off. You can regen regenerate that. I believe that. Being blown to pieces? No. I, I adamantly refuse. So, yeah. Now, Zawa had beaten Shigaraki on all the fodder, Ubaku and Kirishima's help, and Todoroki. But then eventually, they end up, like, Todoroki, not Todoroki, Shigaraki, and Krogiri end up escaping. Only had arrived in the fight, so he actually did, didn't lose any power. Or he did, he, did, he kind of did, like he had to rush all over, like, Japan fighting crime, but, yeah. Oh, next up, three-day break in the sports festival. At that time, it is actually a little limited to only total being told, like, you know, use your super strength or use, use your eye beams. Some of the six to eye beams. For the moment that, you know, the first part of the um, sports festival starts, sports festival starts, it's the race, and Midori can only guess that Todoroki's going to freeze everyone's feet, so it's, it's a logical move. And Bako can assume that as well. So, immediately, you know, the, you know they said start, Midori blasts the ground, launching himself in the air, before, before looking backwards, flying backwards backwards as far as he can. And Bakugo would just basically jump in the air the moment he said start and blast himself forward. The three were already off to, off to a great start. Midori is in physically better shape than everyone there, except for maybe Bakugo, who's comparable, but Midori has a slight edge. So he's running and he's at full speed. And he's not keeping pace with Bakugo and Taroki, but he's dusting everyone else, even some people's speed quirks. I'm not trying to speed quirks, it's quirks that can help their speed. You do find the zero planners. All Midori does is really just jump and drop kick one into the ground, as he has no force to do that. And while it's on the ground, he just runs, he just runs past it. It gets up, but it's Midori, Midori is already gone. Then we came down to that giant gap thing, where you have just like big crawl from rope, crawl, like rope like, 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 other rocks. Midori literally just jumps and blasts through it, and that she does a lot of actually gap to Doroki and him Bakugo are the, the one and two places now. Bakugo being number one, Midori being number two. Like to the mines, Midori really had an idea of just jumping. Like, he basically just. He's ahead at this point, pretty far ahead. So he literally just gets, like, gets all the mines he can, gets all the mines he can, puts it in a pile, jumps, and then blasts himself as hard as he can. And that's why he does get Bakugo, and they end up tying for first. Then they get Rock, Paper, Scissors. Midoriya wins. He's, he's still the one, he's still like the 10 million points guy. Both of Midoriya's power, and he's actually, he's actually confident. He actually does draw in like he wanted to be on his team, but his team does not change. So, yeah. That's when Midori's headbands really tell everyone, focus on keeping my headband and don't try to get anyone else's. So they agree on that, and uh, yeah. And when he does get close, Midori would just blast apart, like they, they blast the ground at people's feet and they end up falling over. So no one really gets really close to Midori, even Todoroki or Ida. As soon as Ida got close, Midori literally just like lifts up his glasses a little bit and blasted one of Ida's engines, and Ida had fallen over because it hurt badly. It kind of just started to kind of, it kind of started to make Ida's leg backfire, so, yeah. Like, oh, boost, backfire, stops, he falls over, everyone tumbles, and then his headband, Ida, not Ida, Todoroki's headband is up for grabs. He saved it, but still. A Bakugo. When Monoma tries to steal his headband, we use all the air to, like, hold back a Bakugo. He didn't try to use Bakugo's explosions, but to Monoma's shock, I'm sorry, a Bakugo, then he just punched through it, first try, got Monoma by the neck, and he yanked the headband off of him and threw him across the field. Or this, the arena. So I'm not going to realize he being this with the wrong guy is first try Bakugo got his hands on him. So, yeah. Alright. Now we move on to the actual fights where we get Midoriya and um, Shinso. This is not the same as Midoriya, it's just like, 
Where he comes to breaking out of it, Midori does do so the same way, but it's not by breaking his finger, you just use, just use one roll, and it can, like, ouchie. That's it. But he tells like, Shinso, you know, he kind of feels he, he sees a similarity between Shinso and someone else. And that's someone else is Aizawa. Aizawa is not injured at this point, he's perfectly fine. But he tells, uh, tells Shinso, you're pretty similar to another hero I know, you should, you, should, you should know him better. He is a teacher here. A few people who know Aizawa well can see where Midori is going, and then Midori would beat Shinso go to a pulp. Just literally, just like, like, well, like, we're left right good night, and Shinso had lost. So Midori didn't even use his quirk, he wanted to give Shinso a fair fight, and he still, he still kicked his ass. By the way, Midoriya is still wearing glasses of, of Izer because his eyes are still kind of messed up from using one for all. As soon as he's on, he's on his eyes, he can target that. It's a lot more strenuous and lasts longer, so he's supposed to use it on his eyes like he with the Nomu. He has to take a break for at least a week, and he only had a three-day break. So, yeah. Alright. But we go into Bakugo versus Araka, and Bakugo literally just took this hand, took this fight to only straight hands, and put her in an arm bar, and she lost. So, yeah. Then other fights, Baku Midori kind of just continue to, to continue to dust until Midori goes to Hiroki. He would tell Hiroki if you go all out, I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat you. Because Hiroki knew this. Midori can blast through seemingly anything, and especially ice. His only option was fire. Midori can't blast through that. He, he can split it apart, but so Hiroki can create more fire. But Hiroki had to use fire out of the sake of convenience until Midori began hyping him up, and Hiroki recognized the quirk as his own. So Midori and Todoroki fight, and Midori does pretty easily beat Todoroki, like some form of Midori can split the fire, but Todoroki can, you know, he can create more. But no, Midori's beams don't end until he wants them to end. So the time, like, the time, like, Todoroki, like, that was Midori's close enough, Midori kept literally just blasting apart the fire, each time Todoroki made more, and the ice didn't help, and Midori kept blasting it as well. But she Todoroki realized that Midori was too close, and Midori just gave him the meanest right hook to the jaw, and that was, that was lights out for Todoroki. So Todoroki's defeated. And then final fight is Midori versus Bakugo. Now that the, the, the summon toss had start, Bakugo used that giant blast using Sodoroki to begin with. That was a starting attack to Midoriya, and even then, it's not much effort for him to do that. He can do that casually. He just doesn't do that because it's too dangerous. But he did that starting attack for Midoriya. Everyone bit nervously saw Midoriya's beams clearing all the smoke. And Midori had his scarf around his face. He was allowed to use that, not the weapon, but to literally just keep debris out of his face. It was it's more the fact that uh, my eyes do this kind of thing, and it's kind of, kind of more more of my own general, general safety. <laughs> Some people, people allow them to have that along with his glasses, but you don't allow to use it to fight. Baku was surprised and he still kept going, you know, blast, like blast for blast, and as she started off was at, at range. Baku would see Midori's eyes drying up, and his eyes began to kind of twitch a little bit, his beams began to, like, kind of just aching his eyes, he's obviously in pain from using the beams. And Baku kind of realized his arms were getting tired, so as she told Midoriya, you know, Throw hands. But would nod as they both just clash, kind of like how Naruto Sasuke did, like, you know, the forum forearm. They clash, and it kind of creates a small crater. They've been both kind of just going, you know, just fighting. So Midori actually just punched the face by Bakugo. Bakugo thought it would knock Midori out of balance, then he realized Midori had just grabbed his arm. Bakugo tried to, you know, swing the other, the leg up to get Midori inside the head, until so Midori would actually grab Bakugo's leg, and being spinning Bakugo around, throwing him out of bounds. And told Bakugo was simply just, you know, kind of simple. And then Midori actually cracked his nose back in place as Bakugo did break it. Midori is not invincible. There's no strike check in place. He yells in pain for a second. And then Midori, Midori, Midori is not first place. Bakugo second. Tokuyami third. Now for the, um, for the, uh, fucking, what was it? Uh, not work studies, but, you know, experience with heroes. It's not, it's not called that. I'm calling it that. This is the same arc, basically. I think time that the, the Midoriya actually learned to use one for all properly. Grand, Grand Trino and Night Eye came to see, so I can probably see that Midoriya isn't going with either of them because he's been with them before. Plus, Night Eye probably isn't taking Midoriya on right now. Bakugo does go with Bashinus, but Bashinus isn't really like kind of about the personality. He does see the, uni the uniqueness in Bakugo, and realizes that Bakugo isn't really just a bully. He's literally just confident, and he has a right to be confident. He knows that. <laughs> Well, I was wondering, you know, who, who would Midori go with? I guess Midori would bonding with Kirishima, so I'm sending him to fourth kind with Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu. And here, they actually will test how Midori like, limits of his power, where he can take it, he one tap Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu pretty casually without using one for all at all. So, yeah, he would take one tap Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu, and there's a way to Kirishima would be working on Red Riot Unbreakable. 
I'm going to be looking at the news one night, one day, I'll actually finish up a troll with, with Force Kind. And then he actually would, like, you know, look at Kirishima, who's like, you know, I'm pretty sure Ida's brother was attacked by not, attacked not well, actually, by the Hero Killer, and I think the Hero Killer's in this area with Ida. As Midori can just not even focus on the Nomu attack, he's focused on the area. And he knows Ida is in that area. Because Ida took a very weird choice to be a, you know, a sidekick to. Or understudy, or intern to. Now, Kirishima heard Midori's logic, he agrees. And Midori decides to sneak out of the building and literally run off to go find the area. Not find, but he knows, he knows where it is. He ends, up, he ends up basically blasting his way there, and Kirishima is, in, is on his shoulders. Eventually, they would land on top of the train, and Grinch would have him be on the train, they would just, just go visit Toshinori. But he sees Midoriya, Midoriya just nods, and, and Kishima is like, alright, um, I don't know who that is, but let's get going. And Midoriya would land, and he lands right as the still anything is about to, you know, kill Ida. But Midoriya would last his katana to pieces, and Ida's actually kind of panicking and realizing his life, his life almost ended. Like, he was seeing his life before, he was seeing his life flash before his eyes. And Midori would lay down, would let down Kirishima, Kirishima actually charges in first. We see Kirishima use Red, right, a Red Bull for the first time, and it doesn't really last long, like a second, and then Stain tries to actually stab him. Midori would charge in, letting Stain stab through the hand, or grabbing Stain's fist, and then just crushing it in his bare hand, breaking Stain's hand. So he yelled as he jumped back, and then Midori would continue having the knife in his hand as he would just pull it out and wrap it in his scarf. And so he hold his hand, he looked down for a second, and when he looked up, he was met, met by an uppercut from Kirishima, who had hardened his fist. And that was enough to knock out Stain right then and there. He was knocked out immediately after. That was like a blow trick to the chin. So Stain fell over unconscious, and Midori's hand was still bleeding a lot. So Midori ends up basically, um, he ends up you know, helping Ida to his feet. Kirishima helps Native, they call an ambulance, call an ambulance. And Midori kind of explains, like, oh, um, uh, we made a traction for Native, and the Native, the Native beat him. And that was, that, was, that was the excuse of, like, Native and teenagers. So, yeah. Midori and Kishima do get in trouble with Fourth Kind, and they get sent back to UA early. So, yeah. Uh, what else happened after this? Pretty sure it would be the, uh, like, it's studying, you know, like, you know, like actual tests, and they have to fight the heroes, and then they go, they go to the forest. So for actually, for actually studying, everyone's aware of how smart Midoriya is. He is the smartest at UA, and it is not objective. He is the smartest. So, when it comes to like, Momo having a study thing, Jason would invite Midoriya to host, not host it, but help everyone else. And Midoriya agrees. So, you know, you know everyone there, Baku would arrive, helping people as well. Because you know, Midoriya and Baku usually spend all their free time with each other, or punching each other in the face, or hanging out with their mothers. So with this, we end up going on to, uh, okay, the studying, they finish that, and here, no one actually, actually would fail the written test. They all pass it. Let's say the limit is, like, 70%. The lowest grades are 70, or 75, 76. And that's Sato, Mina, Kaminari, and that is it. So, yeah. Then, for the, uh, the fights against the heroes, Midori is fighting All Might, Baku is with him, and Midori is told by All Might, you know, you can definitely, like, contend me at full power, so please go easy on me, because I'm being, I'm being restricted. Like, he has actually told Midoriya, I'm, I'm being restricted, I, I, think, I think it's fair, you are too. So Midori decides to only limit himself, so one for all this time. And it's used that his eyes have been messed up, but he's confident in, in his strategy abilities to, to avoid All Might. So, yeah. Now, while Midori was studying, he also wished like everyone did work out because they were they're aware they have to fight people, so they all worked out as well. And Midori gave everyone notes on their quirks. At this point, not everyone had upgraded hero gear, but they had basically been aware of their surroundings to fit their um They were aware of their surroundings to make use of it and when they fight. So, um when Midoriya and actually not Midoriya, I'm gonna start with Midoriya. People that lose, such as, like, Saro. In this one, immediately, he knew it would be the next quirk, and he thought, and so he asked Midori, I not, I can guess me if he had any ideas. And then, like, if you have any ideas to avoid the, you know, the scent. Then he started plugging his nose, so that wouldn't work, and then him and Sarah both have a light little idea of covering their noses or mouth and nose with tape. They do just that, and they run through at midnight at hot speeds. Now, Midnight would try to actually, like, you know, with, like, with, with, like, whip Mineta, only for Sarah to jump in the way and have his elbow out. And he actually had to flip, flip the side of his tape so, so, so Midnight's rope is caught. 
He then he, he began to grow up out of her hands. And then Mina actually would use his whip at her. She avoided, but she avoided right into some of Mineta's planted attacks. And she, she stuck to a, to a rock as she was going to be caught. So win. They escape again. Or not escape. They, they escape this time and they win. So the, they, win, they win on two fronts. Mina and Denki. Mina's um, spout for acid has a little longer range, and also it, it, it corrodes things faster. But suddenly rise up where Nezu's is probably in a wrecking ball, Denki actually asks her for you know, a piece of rebar, as they did burn through a lot of things. Mina handed him a long piece of rebar, and then Denki kind of throw it kind of the javelin. And this is confused Nezu until Denki threw it in the window of the entire, like, you know, crane operator, operating machine. Until then, then Denki would blast the rebar with electricity, and the range should be out of his range. But then he the rebar was bent, it bent downwards, so Denki could reach it. He shocked it, and, and it shocked Nezu, and kept hitting Nezu. With that, then being able, being able to escape, and they win. But Denki was stupid because he had to use all his power to, to reach the bent, the bent end. So with that, they end up passing, but barely. And Sato and Kirishima, Kirishima would bust that red right unbreakable, being able to punch through everything. Sato takes a break. And when Kirishima is out of steam and about to be beat up by um, um, Cementos, Sato actually had recovered, grabbed Kirishima, avoided, and would knock out Cementos with a strong punch to the solar plexus at full force. Cementos faints, and he ends up, well, Kirishima and Sato end up winning, but they both pass out, and the thing a draw this time around, and that's what they're going to do another test to prove they won. So, yeah. They, 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 they pass, barely. They, they take it like right after they woke up, and they're tired. All right, now the forest. You don't have to be like, having to go through the forest, but you can already tell what's going to happen. Though that, that, that the truck or the bus drives off. Now, when shocked, Midori had to shut his scarf in the door and held onto it as it drove off. And he, he just waved goodbye. Back to the call called Midori a traitor, as he would just blast himself to the center of the forest, as he can do that. He can blast himself pretty far. So he, he waved goodbye as he was flying through the forest. And he had to catch himself a few dozen times, so he got the same time as Midoriya, and he had to get the same at the same time, so he didn't hurt himself. Now, when Azawa got there, he saw a Bakugo land, and Midoriya would actually let go of, the scar- of his scarf as his hair was all, you know, poking upward some wind. And he caught them both double, the you know, just assholes for, you know, ruining the plan, and he, he punched them both in the back of the head. When they arrived, and they were all very, uh, not annoyed, but definitely a bit... They weren't mad, but yeah, annoyed fits more. The Pixel Bob tries to claim Midoriya Baku. Not, not Baku, Midoriya Ida and Todoroki. But then that's where everyone kind of actually begins to notice Midoriya's body. As Midoriya in this one is actually a lot bigger, same size as Ida. If you're not as same size, hold up. This one is called Paul Midoriya's training. His build is very, very identical to Scott Summers 6'3, 200 pounds, 200 pounds of muscle. Well, not exactly 200 pounds of muscle, but. At 200 pounds, about 90-ish percent of it is muscle. So yeah. They even notice a bit of bit, bit, bit height. Bakugo is he's, he's around 5'9", 5'10 now. So he's like, yeah, Midori is probably the biggest, in the, like, the biggest guy in the classroom aside from Ida and Shoji. <laughs> and Sato. Sato's about like 6 foot even, I think. But Shoji and Ida are both 6'3", I think. Shoji, Shoji, I, I know for sure. He does a bit. I forgot. But um, for the training, Midori's thing is just the fact that like he's like, oh, my eyes are fine. I really just can't use them for long periods of time because my eyes really start, start to dry up. And how I pointed out, like you can't really stop that. It's kind of just a thing that happens to us with visual powers. But kind of that Midori just told you know just work out and he did just that, like just you know just lift weights, do squats, shit like that. But actually, once he got realizing he was trying to was kind of pointless, yeah, he should have, he should have had to go train with, you know. And the, another surprise, Tokoyami. Tokoyami was in the cave, and Blue Garden began getting out of control, but Midori, Midori would just blast it. And basically, kind of forced Dark Shadow into submission a little bit, but also Dark Shadow would be able to, you know, have a limit of where he starts to get out of control, kind of, I phrase it. So Dark Shadow kind of, kind of learned when to back down, and then Tokoyami learned to go beyond that. So when we get to the night of the attack, Tokoyami is out of control, but he's able to like mildly control some control some of Dark Shadow's movements, or just make him calm down with words. Like he'll be able to, be able to partially like talk him down, kind of. 
I was most telling you know, quit hitting things and basically just Dark Shadow being like loud and yelling, but not knocking trees down, shit like that. He's just yelling a lot. So yeah. But um, Midoriya and Mustafa, we'll go into that first. Now Midoriya does bring food to Coda, then Mustafa would never turn to swipe at Coda, but then Mustafa's shock. Midoriya would actually just grab Mustafa's, like, they kind of lock hands. Mustafa tries to, you know, almost Midoriya, only for Midoriya to almost a stand, just break Mustafa's wrist, just snap it. Which is going back on his wrist, so I think Midoriya doesn't say at all. Midoriya is going in for the win from the start. Mustafa tries to do a bit of talking, but Midoriya would arrive, in full cowl, about 40 percent and he proceeded to give Mustafa the meanest jab cross the uppercut combos you've ever seen. And like, oh, like, he's going to go in for a right hook. Dempsey roll, right, 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 right up to the ribs. Like, Mustafa is being mowed down by Midoriya effortlessly. Even when Mustafa went all out, Midoriya was like, all right, 40% isn't cutting yet. I'm just going to blast him into the sky and watch him fall. And he did just that. So there's a muscle left in the, in the sky, and his muscle fibers can't really hold up to all of it. And it must have been falling, all the momentum actually kind of started him to kind of sort of make him, made him start to burn. And then he hit the ground, he just fainted. He was out of energy. He was tired. So he brings Coco to Mandalay, but he just blasted himself off the mountain to Mandalay. He lands, and he's goes to Mandalay, he's going to go and fight whether she, whether she permits it or not. But the point I thought was here with Mandalay, because there's no, no one else aside from Monoma, and Vlad has Monoma. So, yeah. But, um,. We're going to go on to Tetsu and Kendo. Kendo starts, you know, trying to fan out all of the, um, all of the mustard gas. But to her shock, Tetsu is being shot and literally just walking through it. His mouth is steel just that hard because Midori trained with Kirishima and Tetsu before he signed. So Tetsu is actually able to stand a lot of it until he would harden his hand to a full ability. Oh, just basically swipe at, you know, must, uh, you know mustard. Mustard's mask is just blown to pieces. And he has a giant gash in his face, covering on his eyes, which, which means he's blinded. So yeah, he's kind of covering in fear, saying he quits. He, he, he quit releasing the gas, all of that. He's done. Then with Momo, with her, with her and Awase, I think, and the Nomu, she had a small idea. She, she well, when it comes to studying, she was pretty confident. And it came to the training portion, Midori kind of recommended that she make landmines. And she's a bit confused until Midori started talking about landmines, for the, for the sports festival, she can make those. As she thought about, you know, like as they were trained, she was just running away, didn't really have anything to do when she was running away. She had to find cover and hide and make something. As she runs away, make landmines. Momo had that idea, Momo thought of that idea, and she's running, I would say she would be ripping her shirt at the bottom, kind of making it into a crop top. Which I would say thought was a bit weird. Then she would jump up, I would say, wrapping the shirt, like the part of it on the tree. And then a move ran, would run right over a landmine, blasting itself through the forest and hitting the mountainside where Muskie was knocked out. And now, and now so is the, so the Nomu. So with that, I'll say I should be a bit surprised. He planted, planted the, you know, the tag on Nomu still, but it was still chasing them. As the Momo was a bit more confident, didn't get knocked out. So he's like, you know, you get close. If he gets close, tag it, keep running. So, yeah. The Nomu's unconscious and has a tag just in case he is taken away. Uh, Tokuyami and Moonfish went on to that fight. It's unfortunate they were able to somebody subdue like, 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 Dark Shadow. Like, Dark Shadow's still kind of raging, but he's not hitting things. So Tokuyami can, like, control that. When he sees Moonfish, really, you know, throwing, like, kind of stab at him, he let, he let, he let, he let Dark Shadow just go all out, and Dark Shadow tore him to shreds. and kill him, but he's definitely not able to fight anymore. But uh, then Midori called Dark Shadow, and he just blasted the forest, hitting Dark Shadow and subduing it. And Baki also gets captured. So, yeah. So Baku was captured, but he had basically beaten the absolute shit out of, like, Compress, only being caught off guard by Compress, who thought he had knocked out. So, yeah. And no one, no one got near to Tokoyami. He was literally just too scary to be near, in their opinion. <laughs> but when they get told of the tracker, Midori says he's going after Bakugo, but he just admits he's going after Bakugo. No one, no one will stop him. So people, people can't get on terms with that. And Midoriya would go, would go after Bakugo. He guess she goes with the heroes, as no one is actually going to physically stop him. They can try, and they'll be laid out on their back. And the rest of them, the cops will be laid out on their back. No one's going to stop him, aside from maybe All Might, and All Might will not stop him. By choice, he will not. All right. So. Midori is stalking out, you know, the, the Nomu base with, you know, 
like characters like Ed Shot and the MS Genist, well then everyone else is trying to find Bakugo. And though that, you know, the door is burst open, and we see Best Genist like, you know, be blown to be blown through the stomach by um blown through the stomach by, you know, all for one's compressed, you know, air. But I'm gonna actually blast it out of the out of the out of like, you know, the sky, kind of. Out of there. And it would surprise all for one. And he's like, you know, oh, you're the brat that Ujiko, or not Ujiko, that the doctor said wasn't, said that you didn't have a quirky, a superpower. It's just, it's just a slight bit of a difference, but, yeah. I, I, I digress. This leads to overall fight between Midoriya and Off One. Off One's trying to actually get his hands on, on Midoriya. But back at this point, like, he came out, came out in handcuffs, and like, Shigaraki tried to use, tried to use his bar, his bargaining. Bakugo and Handcuffs proceeded to actually kick the shit out of Shigaraki, Magna, Spinner, and, like, characters, like, twice. Dabi and Togo jumped back, but by then, Bakugo had been able to basically, you know, just... just get the key from Shigaraki and use it, with it like, unlock his cuffs with his teeth. And Dabi and Togo tried to, you know, blast and stab it at, at um, Bakugo, but one blast from him had basically blown them in the walls and they're unconscious. So this led, led to 2v1 two two against All for One and, you know, Midoriya. All for Midoriya versus Bak- Oh, fuck. Bakugo Midoriya versus All for One. Not the other way around. I almost said it like that. I'm dumb. But they fight against uh, All for One, and they're able to hold him off with Best Genius and um, Ed Shot's help. But by the time All for One arrives, All for One is definitely worn down. Like, like his mask is broken, his sleeves have been a bit messed up, his shirt ripped, all that. I might arrive, trying to take over, and proceed to fight Off One himself, and didn't use up all one for all. Like he beats he beats Off One pretty handily in this fight, plus Midori made sure that if All Might wasn't get hurt, he'd blast away all the attacks. A whole thing where All Might was told that the Tomori is Tenko, midst of All Might being attracted, Midori just blasts Off One through a building, and All Might All Might recovers immediately, like just just like that. So All Might gets up, proceeds to fight Off One more, beats him. Like Off One was already like half powered when All Might arrived, All Might like Get like half power now. He's at like, like twenty five by the end of the fight. He doesn't doesn't have much much left. Like he he retires, but he definitely can still fight more. He just won't. So uh, yeah. But uh, hold up real quick. All right. So eventually, dorms are established are established at UA, and then Baku doesn't go the whole thing of like I'm going to kill All Might. All Might just retired because he doesn't have much energy left. He can still fight as All Might, just not for long. Baku doesn't think he killed All Might. He thinks he's fine, or no, no he, does, he knows he's not. He just knows All Might. He knows All Might can still fight. He just knows that All Might can fight at full. A full. See, All Might can't fight at half. He's fight at a quarter now. So yeah. For Midori Storm, it has a very heavy black and red and yellow theme. Not, and he's not as big of an All Might fanboy as before. He still is, just not as big. Because Midori already has a thing that's a complex. Scott has a complex with Professor X. It does go away, but... Yeah, Midori is not as big of a fanboy. He's like a few figurines, and those are just like the limited edition ones. He collects the limited stuff, not just everything. He did as a kid, but not now. Just like, oh, this thing will be, will be limited. I'm going to get it. So, yeah. Oh, then we have to go into them getting their professional licenses, which Midoriya does easily. Like, everything that happens, he gets licensed easy. Like, the whole thing with Kami, by the way, Kami. When it happens, it happens, it's Toba. He doesn't know that, but he knows she's trying to tag him or get him, like, like, get, like you know, get him out. Well, first off, Midoriya doesn't have any, like, no one will ever get a single, like, ball stuck to, like, one of his tags at all. No one will ever do so. He is simply just too skilled for that to happen. His dragon speed, he can catch it. Or he can blast it, or he will dodge. You cannot tag him. So Kami, one that he saw her trying to tag him, he literally just did a quick chop the nose and broke her nose. So she ran away, holding her badly broken nose. And then it goes on to I'm gonna go like Bakugo with like Kirishima and Denki. This one Kirishima actually actually using red right breakable actually tank a lot of attacks, and he's going to be turned into a you know a meatball. His body comes much more dense and takes a lot longer. So instead of him turning into meatball, he would basically just deck the guy across the face of him flying back. And then when he, one time he's turning into meatball, Baku go ahead enough time to take, take advantage of that, grab him by the, by the shirt, and throw him in through like throw him to the ground. They were on also like a, like a makeshift highway. Guy slammed in the ground, there's then he would just shock him in place, which when the time he passes out, he then forces everyone back into their usual forms. And then everyone got back up. Everyone except Kishima was dazed. So Baku proceeded to kind of just blind them all with a flashbang attack, and Kishima tagged them all. 
And well, Banksy would tag the, you know, the meatball guy. Baco would help tag, help, help Yoshima tag the other fodder around. So, uh, yeah. Uh, next part would be rescue. Amidori does that pretty easily. He's good at that. So, like, he's make sure to make sure to reassure everyone else, you know, like, he goes over, gets everything, gets rubble off of them, um, and it's like, ma'am, give him, like, ma'am, sir, kid, give him what's in the vicinity, can I, like, you know, are you hurt at all? And Midori does this flawlessly. He's, he's great at it. He actually scores the highest for this exam. But when it comes down to getting Orkin and Lackey's coming out, and, like, you know, they're surrounding Midori and everyone else, he'll just grab the injured person, and then we just simply just threaten to blow them all to pieces, like, blast them to blow them to pieces. They do, like, the villains who try to, you know, quote, quote, quote villains, try to use their, like, cement guns, only have them blast them to pieces, and so we just say, I, I, could, I could just vaporize you. And it's not being very intimidating, or to the point where we all back down, backing away, dropping, dropping weapons, all of that, and Midoriya walks the civilian to safety. And the villain actually you know, like, we should, 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 should vaporize him, and he says, no, my, my beams aren't later, so they're just, they're, 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 it's, a, it's one punch, basically, for my eyes. Actually, does make the civilian laugh, saying, all right. I, I, I broke character, my bad, but good job. You do, you're threatening, you're threatening villains without having to actually hurt one of them. But Gang Orca have been to fight Inasa and Todoroki. Owena has gotten a boost in power, including Todoroki. So in this one, Inasa's flame, oh, it's flame, but Inasa's wind being interfering with Todoroki's flames. Todoroki decided that she burns like blue, overpowering Inasa's flames, and draining, draining Gang Orca. She's knocking him out because, you know, he got dehydrated, his skin did. And he got fainted as you know, so kind of amplified the flames and Todoroki kind of overpowered them, kind of. And they're kind of going at it, like, interfering with each other. Todoroki just literally forces got so strong, he kind of overpowered Inasa, and then the flames kind of got rolled around each other. Or the wind and flames kind of rolled around, uh, flames from wind and flames rolled around each other. Green being over faster, so flames were hotter. My bad. Alright. And this, though, only person who doesn't pass. Probably Bakugo, who's still just being off of confidence. He's the only one who doesn't pass. That's about it. And when when Mono ends up bragging about it, Bakugo will just deck him across the face because he hits Mono a lot more often. Just because it's a it's what happened at, at, happened at, at sport, the sports festival, and it's that kind of running gag where Kendo will trap Mono on the on the neck, Bakugo will deck him across the jaw, and that's and that's how, how the gag goes. So yeah. But now we're going to the two heroes movie. Which honestly, not much to say here. Well, well, Wolfram, yeah, he's strong. But his thing is like steel. It already can use one to one hundred percent one for all, confidently. Also, while using beams that punch as hard as All Might does. Like whatever All Might Midori do as a tag team, Midori can do that by himself. He has gotten that strong. Because when we came to find out Wolfram, All Might just watched as Midori would body this like high tier villain by himself. He pretty easily subdues that villain. Also, a cool scene where it came to that one guy with like you know the drill slash claw hands, and Minori would like useful kind of a wall like water wall to avoid him. And that one when Minori had to fight that guy, the, the guy swung at Midoriya. I really just grabbed him by the collar and threw him through a brick wall and let the guy fall like ten stories before he landing on a car. He doesn't die, but he's definitely definitely in a coma. So, so the main villain, Midoriya handled half the time, even if all might were to help. But, um, we're going to keep going, and I'm going to say we move on to, like, hold up. Alright, next arc is focused on the Shirai Sakai and Eri. So, when it comes down to the works the hero study, Midoriya would probably, well, he's been with Nidai before, and he does the relationship with Mirio off screen. So, with him and Mirio and Nidai kind of having an existing relationship already, I can probably see Midoriya still not going to that eye. Like, like how he didn't go over Grand Trino because he's been with Grand Trino before. So Midoriya would probably go with someone like Fat Gum as he's trying to sit with someone who can tank his attacks and probably increase his attack power. Well, as, as I said, it's consistent, so probably just to benefit characters like Fat Gum and Kirishima with his attack power. <laughs> Doesn't mean Kirishima kind of make a good duo when it comes to training and overall experience, so yeah. But, um,. I'm um, said so we move on to when um, Aerie first comes in, into Midoriya and that one guy just claimed to be her parent. The, the moment Midoriya could tell the girl was scared, he looked at Mirio, just told her, just told him, you know, get the girl out of here. 
And Miro did just that. And Midoriya would basically use, like, when Miro can use his cape to, you know, hide everything. The only thing I would ask about, when you get a member of the, you know, she asked, I would ask about Aerie, Midoriya says, uh, she ran that way. I didn't stop her, because she said she was playing a game with her daddy when I tried to stop her. The guy would grab Midoriya by the collar, so I didn't, you know, get in trouble, and went for Midoriya to just pick him up by his collar, like the guy that tried to get Midoriya. Midoriya would just lift him up with one hand and threaten him. The guy was like, 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 like five, eight, Midoriya, six, three, and a hero. The guy is a, is a nobody Yakuza. So Aerie, at this point, escaped. Fine. The thing is, Overall, probably knows what happened. So, this can go one of two ways. Aerie leads them to Shihai Sakai base and they're already prepared for an attack. Or two, Shihai Sakai raids um, the uh, raids Nightmare Agency. Now, you guys may be wondering why, 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 why was Midoriya with, Midoriya with Mirio still? I think my notes, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it, my bad. Yeah, Midori's kind of going back, back and forth still, because Beckham still trains with Kirishima, or still trains Kirishima, but also he was reporting to Night Eye about the, about the court canceling drugs, wanting to know if he had any, any, any notes on it. It was more than since stopping, stopping by to see Night Eye about, like, you know, hey, do you have notes on this? Night Eye says no, Midori leaves, Mirio's at Mirio's on, on patrol, so Midori just wall, just wall walks with him. So it was just honestly the sake of convenience that Midori was happy to be there. That was just it. So, um,. We go on to, uh, I'm just the option of she has that kind of rating and not as agency, but actually that was more interesting. What happens is that like, Mirio calling Midoriya, like, saying, you know, oh, we're being ridden by Yakuza, here are coming, but they're not really any big ones to agencies, like, they, they don't have power at all. But here's where something, something happens. There's one hero who's very strong, has no agency, works alone, wanders the city. Mirko. I can see her arriving to fight here because she just wanders like wanders her territory fighting, but also has no agency. Goes around. I see this. Fit, I see this fitting like you know her kind of aesthetic of what she would do to become a, not become a hero, but to act as a hero, just wandering around and fighting. So she arrives, just happens to, happen to be there, and helps fight against you know the Shia Saikai. And eventually, when Midoriya, Fat Gum, Kirishima arrive, well, simply put, yeah, Midoriya fights Overhaul to begin with, just knowing he's the strongest one there, so he just charges him point blank. The one guy with the whole arrow thing, I believe, like his hair. Come and get to that guy. Tamaki literally just, just amber, like, just appear right behind him, neck chop, end the fight. Guy with 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 with, with, with quirk cancelling bullet, she took care of him immediately after. I'm at, not after, right then and there. Rappa was a very big, like, running in the, the front, so I led the fight between Rappa and Mirio, which Mirio ended almost as quick as it started. He began pretty easily to manhandle Rappa. And then it came down to Midoriya's overhaul. Literally, overhaul tried to go all out by like, using with people, but Midoriya's AP was just too high to keep up with, and Midoriya beat him almost as quickly as the fight had started. So yeah, Kai is beaten by, by, by Midoriya with no difficulty at all. All Midoriya do is to, is to keep his distance, and he does that really well. Even when Kai tries to overhaul the ground, Midoriya just blasts the spikes out of the ground and hits Kai. So Chisaki is beaten... There's no diff by Midoriya. Midoriya is, Midoriya is a very still fighter, and as I said before, his battle IQ and IQ unrivaled for, unrivaled for people his age, but now extends to heroes in general. It's nearly unrivaled. Only people who, uh, who you know, rival his, his battle IQ and intelligence are seasoned heroes. Guy is a seasoned criminal that doesn't have a battle IQ. He has... He's, he's, he's a criminal. He has a good IQ when it comes to being a criminal. That's about it. Midori had kind of a good IQ, good IQ when it comes to that, and general general battle, which he beats Kai in a matter of five, ten minutes. Yeah, so Kai is manhandled by a Midoriya. Mirio or Eri never lose their quirk. And that uh, never dies. This arc was kind of pointless because there's no casualties, aside from the only part of it being, only part of it being Kai, it's Kai being arrested. Although Toga and Twice didn't infiltrate, they weren't aware there's going to be attacks so when they arrived at like, Shaki's base. They already left. So, um, yeah... Okay, so this is Zane's cut off by Shigaraki, all that, but, um, yeah. I don't see that being more important right now, so, uh, yeah. Pause. Alright. So, uh, after this, I'm pretty sure we go on to the whole, gen the whole, like, the gentle criminal arc, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's, pretty sure that's what's next. And what gentle little thing is, like, you know, the elasticity thing. Yeah, um, once we really figures that out, his 
I would put a one for all literally just begins to break Gentle's like concept of strength. So yeah, so, so Midori, Midori has so the UA has a whole, the whole festival thing. Midori goes out to get groceries. He's got the frost some stuff. Fights Gentle. If first thing came down to like the giant still being that Midori can hold up with one arm, he does that easily. Like like full counting, one hundred one hundred one percent holds up holds up, holds up the steel beam, and he just waves, waves, just waves his hand and goes gentle through through a building. Throws the throws steel, steel beam down. Midori used to basically manhandle gentle, even when gentle went all out without Brahma's help. When Midori realized he was getting amped, he literally just blasted it into the ground with like a glance in the, into the fight right then and there. Gentle cannot handle that handle that level of attack power. As Midori's beams out AP all night by now, and that is without one for all's help. So one tap, he beats gentle. La Bravo's arrested, Gentle's arrested, and this the end the season. Until we get to the next part, being the movie Two Heroes Rising. Not Two Heroes, actually. Yeah, actually, you know, I think it is. I think it's Two Heroes Rising. Hold up. It's Two Heroes Rising. So, it's basically a movie about nine. It comes down to that movie, um... Honestly, I can see it being pretty easy, but also came down to Midoriya going to, you know, say that, like, that little girl and her brother. The little girl doesn't you know, rely on heroes. Well, now that Midoriya got the call of, like, you know, where the brother could be, Midoriya used one percent one for all to race around the island, and one for all one for all is, like, very high hypersonic. So Midoriya does that in, like, a matter, like, racing on the island in a matter of less, less than ten minutes. But then he writes, like, and like, yeah, the girl's like, oh, so it took you two hours. Wow, it took you twelve minutes. He's like, yeah, I'm fast and I'm smart. I'm I I I kind of deducted that this would be the last place a kid would a kid would be. There's, there's no criminals here. I'm pretty sure I think I think of a kid getting lost playing. This is this where I assumed he would be? It's, it's a playground too. Of the only kids here. You're like, oh, you didn't you didn't really check. You kind of use common sense. Even try to use a giant like monster as a distraction because of her quirk, and really just blast it one try, and that's the end of it right there. But uh, Midori says Midori said there's no villains. He was, he was definitely incorrect. Because eventually 99's crew does attack. The thing is, though, um, one of the weaker members being that one guy with the, like, the claw thing, or to fight the one guy who's experienced fighting someone who uses claw to advantage. Cloth guy tries to fight Bakugo, who's just fighting Midoriya, who fights with a scarf. It is very elastic. Or not elastic, but flexible. So, when it came down to the Bakugo, it was like, one guy in the Bakugo feels like his arm being wrapped up, he just grabbed the guy and come over at full, like, full force, and he basically blows apart the entirety of, you know, the, the cloth before blessing the guy through a building with and fight right then and there, one go. He had character like being captured, Kishima isn't captured, but Red Right Unbreakable clawed himself out of it, and his Red Right Unbreakable is much sharper, much more, much more, much more powerful. So, easy. And on the beach versus, versus Chimera. Tokuyami has experience controlling a much stronger Dark Shadow, as Dark Shadow has a limit of what he, what he can do now because he's used to being hurt by Midoriya if he goes to a certain level. Tokuyami can take advantage of that and control it. Point where he almost go all out with Dark Shadow. Almost go all out. But I'd say at full power, about 88% of, to- of what Tokuyami can, can, can control, and he does use that to beat Chimera first try. It was a hard fight, but he beat him. Was it the person who isn't defeated? Actually, no, actually, never mind. I see everyone being defeated. The entire 1A is much stronger than before, and they all regroup to go fight and help. But, but Midori versus 9 is where, is where I'm going to start first. So Midori, Midori versus 9. That begins 9 tries to steal Midori's quirk, like, versus you think the beams because they're powerful. He tries to steal those, and when you realize he can't steal it, you try, you try, 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 try to go for one for all. But Midori just says, you know, you broke my glasses. Nine says, you know, like, what are you talking about when you have his hand blasted so hard that it kind of just gets blown up? Nine goes on pain holding his hand, only when you kick it in the face, and then Midori proceeds to basically lay the most vicious hands on Nine. Like, Nine isn't even, like, Midori's even, he's quickly using his quirk and proceeds to basically just lay hands on Nine as viciously as possible. Like, his hand, like, he pulls apart in Nine's hand, kicks him, kicks him in the face, grabs him by the hair, which is basically just laying into his head as much as possible. In my opinion, it would be very similar to the panel of Mookism, where it's Ollie versus Samuel, where Ollie's just like holding him by the face and slamming his face into his, skull, into his like, nose as much as possible. Like, when they arrive, see Midoriya doing that, and then he would like, let like, go of Nine, and Nine just hits the ground unconscious. Now, keep in mind, um, Midoriya is not Ollie, who is like 5'10, 100, 100, 140 pounds, 150 pounds. 
Minori is 6'3", 200 pounds, and is physically advanced or human. So is Ollie, but Minori is an actual superhuman in every way of the word. Nine has brain damage, severe brain damage. He is not getting up in years. In fact, he might actually just die. He's sick, and the Midoriya, 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 Midoriya probably gave him brain, ble- brain bleeding. Sister so, so Nine's arrested. He dies in prison. It's due to illness, but Midoriya, Midoriya was almost blamed. Midoriya kind of got a warning for blowing apart a guy's hand, though. So, um, yeah. Uh, pause real quick. All right, next season is the entire Endeavor arc, which Midori and Mako do, 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 do participate in. The movies are canon. Endeavor literally just just be Midori as like the strongest kid of the generation, and that includes his son. He's like, oh, like he, he acknowledges Midori is like probably the strongest actual hero right now, if not the strongest kid, not kid person around. The whole Endeavor thing probably goes the exact same in my opinion, but probably less tense as Midori just try to break the ice using strategic things. Also, this arc is much different aside from when it comes to villains. Midoriya beats them or just gets closer to fighting them. Like, oh, one guy who laughs. Like, one guy who causes laughter. Yeah, I mean, Midoriya helps fight him, but Endeavor would arrive for some time and beat the guy. Or the guy with the guy with glass. Or the guy with, like, street arrows. Midoriya is mostly the one who holds them off, then Endeavor and Hawks handle them. Because they're, they're, they have kind of a small advantage over, over Midoriya. A small one, but not a, not, not a big one. A small one, but still. Alright, uh... What else? Hold up. Pause. All right. Uh, for season five. It's not. So it's a, It's another movie. Then my villain. Or first. It's then. Well, never agency. My my villain academia goes the exact same. I don't see anyone being stronger than usual because Midori does not influence villains. Or anything. They're all kind of kind of scared of him. They're all aware of how smart he is. Even all for one kind of pointed out that, that that kid's a genius. But also kind of point out how like yeah, they, a kid go to war with me. They would not do that unless that kid has some kind of pull. Watch out for him. So if anything, all the villains are kind of just weary of Midoriya. But, um, yeah, so My Villain Academia, then another movie. Yay. It's the, it's the World the World's Hero Mission, which, honestly, I don't see this arc being much different, so I think that the Midoriya's intelligence can probably clear his name. Like, like when Midoriya's blamed for a murder or bombing, for sure bombing. Almost immediately, Midoriya's smart enough to clear his own name, and he does so. It goes down to like, you know, Midori fighting that one guy, the fucking like the blue guy. The Midori had that like fucking iconic scene of him like doing the very similar to the one one one, 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 one for all Infinite Infinity, where you kind of had the the flaming fist thing. Yeah, Midori would have that iconic pan all the time because he using one percent one for at, at his command. But honestly, this movie is something much different. It's like that Midori used his intelligence to begin with and cleared his own name easily. I think the movie wasn't Midori on the run. It was Midori finding this one guy and everyone helped him. So yeah, moving on. The war, first war. Um, honestly, where where do I begin? So it comes down to like, Midoriya seeing everyone here. Midoriya, 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 the thing about you know who should he fight first? Shigaraki, one guy with with all for one now. Gensumakia, fucking giant kaiju rampaging, or focus on, on the horde of villains attacking attacking just hordes and hordes of heroes. He doesn't ever how long he's going to watch Shigaraki, and never explains, you know, probably this amount of time. And Midori simply says he's single handed handle handling the Gentomaki, it should not take long. So Midori is jumping off as fast as he can, and Midori at this point doesn't lock Black Whip, all of that. If I just got one little arc, not important, it'd be the class 1A versus class, class 1B thing. If it happens, Mid- Midori would, would just violate. About it, that's about it. He, would not, he, he wouldn't be allowed, be, allowed, be allowed to join in, she'd still take his place, he's just too strong. Sorry about that. But yeah, no, but Midori does have Black Whip. The danger sense, smoke screen, all that. He has every single ability, one for all, because he uses it 100% from the start. Like, he won't need much black, black whip. He wants every ability except for the first, except for the first three users. Well, not first three. Every ability except for the second and third users. The only ability he does not have by the time the war rolls around. There's some other area, use black whip, so he swings around, finds Gentamachia. Not finds him, sees him. They fight. Now he sees Momo already, like, on an idea, so he just tells them that, like, you know, he'll be looking at Gentamachia, all the villains around him. They, they, they should need to focus on, on their plans. So, pretty quickly, he's able to blast on Gatamakia, weaken him significantly, and then Kishima would give him the sedative made by, made by Momo. Then, well, at this point, Midori basically blasts away all the, area, all the villains in the area, too, so they just go on to go continue helping fight characters and fight random villains. But here, that's where we see a small change in the arc. Midnight does not die. 
Momo, Mina, Kirishima, available all early on. Like, the one, the one the worst started, Midoriya's target was Gantamaki, because it's a very obvious target, and be an easier one to handle, because Gantamaki's a big target, Midoriya relies on pinpoint accuracy. So, yeah. So, so he beats Maki pretty quickly, then Momo, well, not, well, not, not, we, not beats him, but weakens him, then Kishima would, tip, but Kishima would defeat him a sedative, knocks him out. They go on, fight, fight, fight random fodder, and includes the ones who, who would kill Midnight and Cannon, but they beat her. Or they beat them. And Midnight is safe. Or, another idea. Night Eye says, 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 says Midnight. He is alive. He is around. He is fine. So, when it comes down to, you know, oh, Midnight being cornered, Night Eye at full power, or if not, not full power, but just still ready for a fight, beats the villains with, with Midnight's help. They're both injured, but they do so. So, uh, yeah. I don't see a place for Night Eye anywhere else. Like Maki, yeah, oh, you'll, you'll feed him sedative in this amount of time. Or Mirko, he wouldn't be allowed there. Mirko would not, wouldn't want him there. Shigaraki. Fate can change. Shigaraki and Midoriya would be the ones to change fate. Here, here would be perfect saving, saving Midnight. So yeah, but um, Midoriya makes his way to Shigaraki. Or then so does, so does, so does, like, you know, Night Eye, Midnight, all that. Mirio, eh. I think Mirio never lost his quirk. He's fine. I think I said that before, but still, it needed to be said. So, so Midoriya and Shigaraki fights. Midoriya going at 100%, and his body is still being, being, being stronger by the day. He's fighting at 100% with no drawback. Like, he's stronger than every version of Midoriya, including Second War Arc, except for maybe, maybe like Gear Shift. We guys going, oh, what about, what about Fajin? <laughs> this is when Midoriya would blast Fajin Midoriya out of the sky in one go. Only thing saving Kanon Kanon Midoriya from this one is gear shift, and not by much. Not by much. So, yeah, this Midoriya is fighting Shigaraki, who going, 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 going pretty well, honestly. With how evolved Midoriya's control over one for all is, I can see this being the fight where he unlocks Fa Jin and uses that to his, to his advantage and beats. Not, but, 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 he probably just does beat Shigaraki. Yeah, but then no moves arrive, and that and that's where basically the fight kind of ends because Shigaraki retreats. But also Midoriya does think it'd be smart at this point to dis disclose the information of, of of one for all, but in a different manner. This Midoriya already knows that you can begin jelly, so it'd be kind of hard. So in the midst of like everyone recovering, Midoriya begins doing tests at UA to graduate early. As he's thinking of the jelly, smart is he you know he'd be he'd prone to be arrested. But it's the day she would graduate UA early. And it isn't his note to his classmates, it's the fact that he did graduate early. He, did, he was able to, able to accomplish that. And his feats in the war proved he was ready to, to be a hero. So, he was able to graduate UA, UA early, and is made a hero. Also, the dude did, did, like, no one really knows who he is, so he's a very low-ranking low -rank, hero, but he's a hero nonetheless. In fact, because Endeavor's still like on the war front, he like he's probably put in Endeavor's agency or not at you know not at agency. It makes make, make more sense. So, so he's with Night Eye, and then he's on he's on patrol pretty often with characters like um Centipeter, Bubble Girl, Mario, all that. Also, one for all, he did actually make, make kind of make, make a statement about you know what the, what this is, and it's kind of starts kind of makes it like. He leaves the relationship to all for one out of it. Basically, he says this was a quirk made, made passed down, to fight a secret society of villains, being a league of villains, basically all for one's empire. This quirk was, was passed down secret to fight, fight the league of villains throughout history, and everyone believed it, thinking of All Might and Midoriya as more heroic people. Midoriya should up to the rankings, and All Might was out, out, of, out of retirement with Midoriya to you know fight anyone that anyone they would be able to find. So when we go through the streets, Midori actually does have something to eat, drink, all that. But also he recruits anyone who's willing to join his side. That including Stain. But also with like with Layla with Layla Lady Nagant. She still has all things where she injures herself, but Midori is specifically able to get her treatment and she joins his side because he would ask her to. So Midoriya's crew to patrol Japan, he doesn't stop his classmates. His crew is quite literally Nagant, Stain, All Might, and Mirio. Those are his four. And they're damn near unstoppable. Like, All Might is, yeah, weakened. Even in a split second and one punch, she'll knock out anyone, except, except for maybe Shigaraki and All for One. Um, except those two, maybe. But, um... 
we keep moving until we get to like also by the way Nagant had Shigaraki I bet Shigaraki just being detained again but I want to say he joined Midoriya's team and used his quirk on his feet maybe but probably not he doesn't like Midoriya Midoriya embarrassed him severely but um we move on to the traitor being discovered and Midoriya to no one not to no one actually everyone's surprised would say it's pretty obvious I like, oh, how does Midoriya know? Scott Summers is damn smart. He 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 can see through bullshit. Aoyama's a pretty obvious traitor, in my opinion. Like my 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 theory for traitor, Aoyama, Aoyama or, or, or Hagakure. Those are my that's my theories before before Aoyama even came out as a traitor. So, in my opinion, it'd be pretty easy to find out, find out Aoyama as a traitor. The one guy who can't use use his quirk right was was gifted gifted the quirk. I don't see that being impossible for anyone to figure out. Midoriya says, like, yeah, it's pretty obvious. It's going to break down why it was obvious, which makes everyone feel stupid. He assumed that, he assumed that, they, that they knew and just let him stay. So they realized, you know, oh, they're being dumb. He set, up, he, set up, he set up a plan to basically capture all for one. Being that, you know, they like, you know, have Necro Geary captured. They have Monomo copy his quirk. They make portals. People jump out. But they're staying on standby. Staying on standby to copy, not copy, but to cut all for one, get his blood. Or literally anyone. Get off one's blood on your hands or Shigaraki's and pause, but get them stuck in place so people can jump them. That, that is the entire point of like the plan at this point is to capture Shigaraki and All Might with Saint's blood. Shigaraki, Shigaraki or off one. I'm done. Uh, pause. I'm not sure about that. Alright. So, um, the plan basically hinges on, hinges on staying and everyone being able to get him in a good position. So, the plan does begin. Aoyama meets up with all for one. Portals open up. And Ayama's first attack is really a direct to offer one, but to oh, offer one shock, not like a point blank attack, it's to cut him. Or at least to hit him. Like, it hit him in general, but to graze him. It would graze his shoulder, creating a small wound. But everyone decides to take advantage of that, targeting any small wounds made on offer one or Shigaraki. And Midori's the one target, targeting Shigaraki, telling everyone, you know, step off, I'll fight him by, by, by myself. So everyone is able to agree with that. Um. Bakugo, meanwhile, is one of the people, like, on the main people on the attack force against, against, like, all for one. It's Bakugo, Nagant, who's fine right now, she healed. Bakugo, Nagant, All Might's on standby in the suit. The suit is built to amplify his power at this point. It should be bringing up from about 25% to 40. But, um, Bakugo, Nagant, Tokoyami, and a few other characters. By the Todoroki... I said this about poor, when I got stronger with Midoriya. Todoroki is definitely one of the people that got much stronger, and I gave, like, I did the Dobby ending quicker, just Todoroki flash freezing him, and we won't let the, the, the Ice Man's to, you know, melt. They beat him. So I, I, I can see them beating, beating Dobby in half the time, and then that, that family joins in to fight all for one. So, yeah. Like, if anything, Endeavor isn't as injured and, and can actually continue being a hero. Well, probably not. He, he retires in the end. Who cares? But, um, yeah. Um, Midoriya versus Shigaraki. We're going to go to that right now. They fight, and mainly it starts off as like a, like a blow-for-blow blow fight. So Midoriya would actually fight to, you know, on the side, but he would not gear shift. Oh, the only guy who's using gear shift, like, you know, pause and push back Shigaraki. Oh, Shigaraki, uh, he ex- only he stalled for even a second. Pause. Okay, I'm back. All right, so the moment that Shigaraki even pauses for a second... Midori would basically use one for all with his eyes, plus the fact his AP is stronger with every arc. His eyes go beyond being like, oh, All Might level. No, his AP, and with one for all, when it comes to his kicks, punches, headbutts, whatever you want to say, all surpassed All Might in his prime. His beams, even more so. Hitting Shigaraki is basically taking him out at a fight much quicker on. The point where we go into Midori cutting himself in black with all his muscles together, that never happens. By then, Shigaraki's already been defeated by Midori. Midori knocked him out. Oshiraki is just knocked, is just knocked unconscious, and we see off one turn to you know gain control. No one would want to fight Midoriya. No one should want to. Plus, we'll, plus we'll offer one. Um, yeah, by then, uh, I think enough cuts have been made or injuries have been made to actually allow Stain to pause off one in place. And so we see all might jump in on a glider in a suit, and he decides to end off one's life here and now. Now, the, the attack doesn't last long, because I can see Offerman's body in the comments actually break free of Saints control. But by then, 
on it literally would just go all out, armor enhancing his power, and would basically punch apart All for One's skull, killing him right then and there. So All for One is killed by All Might, and no one's honestly surprised. All for One needed to die. And even if he would be like, oh, Shigaraki, he's, he's the new All for One. Not good to fight him. It's not good to fight, to fight Midoriya, ever, in your right mind. At least this version of it. Sorry, I lost my almost fell. So, even if Off One would fight Midoriya, or Off Araki would fight, would fight, fight Midoriya, one on one, Midoriya would still beat him. Not effortlessly, but it's not extremely difficult. I would say, like, 60% power beats Off for One for, for Midoriya. It would be, kind of, be that easy to him. But then, if, even so more so, if All Might and Stain jump in, or Bakugo, who's awakened, Shigaraki, not Shigaraki, Toku Tokuyami, going all out, he jumps in. Endeavor, Natsuo, Fuyumi, their mother, all of them jump in. Freezing, pausing, stalling, blasting, hitting. All for one stands no chance. The point where Midoriya did pour in one for all into like into Shigaraki, but all he poured in was Nana. And that was enough to basically purge Shigaraki of all for one. His body was so worn down, that's all it took is Nana to calm him down. Basically, Nana had to deal with his past trauma, and then... No more... No more depresso. So with this, this ends up with Shigaraki, basically... He's not just in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a catatonic state. But here's where I'm taking notes from... What was the MHA, like, AU comic that I liked? I forgot the creator, who I want to see very badly again. In her headcanon, it basically resulted in Shiraki being reverted back to his specs like his teenage years or his kid years and then being raised by like an adult Midoriya and um, Melissa Shield. I mean, similar happens where they try to like, you know, rewind Shigaraki to a pre catatonic but this results in him being like, off Rocky again. The only safe option is Kid Shigaraki. It's the only safe option is Kid Shigaraki. <laughs> so yeah, with Kid Shigaraki, instead of being raised by, you know, adult, adult Midoriya, no, it is literally just like Kid, Kid, Kid Shigaraki who's like, Eight years old, raised by Inko and All Might, or All Might, probably just All Might. I don't see, I don't see the Inko thing happening because she still has a husband, technically. So yeah, raised by All Might, and occasionally Midori, who just flies like the older brother figure. Same for Bakugo. Actually, most of One Age, Shiraki has as her little brother now because they don't really, they weren't all directly harmed by him, mainly all for one. So, yeah. and in the future, number one hero. In the in canon, currently, like, the story's over, but currently the number one hero is Mirio. Um, Midori is one who, the one who beat Shigaraki, still an active hero, still very, 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 very power, powerful. Midori being, being number one hero is the only thing that makes sense. I mean, the only thing that makes sense is him being number one hero, and then the, the number two, Mirio, definitely. Bakugo is still a very confident, like, overconfident person. He deserves it, but still, he is. So it's kind of, it kind of like, puts, puts him at the top ten, but nowhere near the top five. Like, number eight right now is probably, 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 probably the most likely. If I want to say he's in the top ten, even. By Bakugo's arms, he never has a holding where he dies. He is fine. Like, he does not die at anyone's hands. There's more help to fight all for one. They're playing with him to compensate. They literally just, just, just made him, make him bleed himself for stain. Like... So, yeah, Bakugo never really had a chance to die. The plan was very simple, and it happened earlier. The war ended a matter of, like, two hours, maybe. But, but Makia, yeah, he, he never had a chance to, like, be a villain, even if he... I'm pretty sure he's a hero. Not hero, but he's on the hero side right now. So, yeah. Basically, this is right here and now. Midori is Mid a part-time hero. Oh, mainly, mainly, mainly full-time at full -time UA. So he's the, he does one, does one to spread his knowledge. All right, um, final, final stats for, for Midoriya. Honestly, saying Midoriya is country level seems actually appropriate in terms of power. In fact, actually, probably, I'm not, 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 not going to go continental, but multi-country level seems, seems pretty good for, pretty good for like Midoriya at this point. So, yeah. His intelligence overall, by the time he's an adult like a hero and teacher, he is probably the smartest character in his verse. There, there, there's no contention. He is the smartest and the most skilled and the strongest. Strongest, smartest, fastest, most durable, etc. He is. He has every category in spades at, 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 at the top of the line. 
Like one of those like, oh, this character's pretty smart. Midoriya is that times 100. He's the best character in his verse right now and will be for till the end of time, basically. All right, adios. We guys enjoyed.